My guest, a doctor in divinity and theology and a biblical scholar, wondered why Satan in the book of Job was allowed even to enter the courts of heaven, and how Satan had the audacity to argue with God in heaven. When God spoke the answer, it rocked all his theology. Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I recognize that you are here big time. This is your platform. Have your way. In Jesus' name, I release your glory now. My guest, Dr. Francis Miles, was astounded by miraculous results as he traced the footsteps of Rabbi Jesus in the courts of heaven. Many believers, even those that have studied the heavenly courts, have never even considered these legal rights. Before you briefly describe the courts of heaven, I want to tell you something. When he's a guest on this show, we have more miracles. Do you remember when you demonstrated that the rope? Jumping and the bloodline. Jumping the bloodline? <laughs> miracles were poof, like popcorn. Well, I believe the same thing's going to happen. I will tell you the court of heaven as the Lord uh, really brought it to me. You know, he, uh, I, for, for a long time, I did not understand that there was a judicial side of the kingdom of God. But when the revelation of the court of heaven began to come, things began to open up in my mind. But the thing that brought it home for me is the Lord began to speak to me. He said, Francis, look around you. There is not on earth any self-respecting government that can exist and run its government without the judiciary. And he said to me, I am running the biggest government in the planet. And then he gave me an example. He said, if, you, if an American citizen, for instance, uh, commits a crime in Australia, he can't be tried in an American court. The reason is American judicial system have no, have no jurisdiction right. over crimes done in Australia and vice versa. So God told me then what I think is going to happen when you break the law of God. You can't go to the U.S. Supreme Court. They have no jurisdiction over the law of God. You have to go to a spiritual court that represents that government for things like that. That is really the understanding of the court of heaven. You talk about the consequences for violating law. Yes, there are consequences of violating the law of God. This is why one of the reasons why Satan is really having a field day with the body of Christ, because they don't understand that Satan has access to the court of heaven where he can bring accusations against us because of breaking the law of God. And so many people's destinies are held back. Miracles that they should be happy to them are held back because of legalities that they have allowed Satan to have in the realm of the spirit. This is why Paul says, give no room to the devil because he understood these legalities in the realm of the spirit. See, we have seen incredible miracles. We've seen tumors disappear. We've seen people who couldn't get promotions get promoted after we began to deal with the legalities they had in the realm of the spirit by just introducing them to the concept of the court of heaven. When Jesus uh, in Israel, there, there were many rabbinical schools, many rabbis. Jesus was of a class of rabbis that were known as rabbis with shmikr. A rabbi with Shmikar was a rabbi with authority. They were very unique rabbis because in order for you to be a rabbi with Shmikar, you had to have divine attestation what made you a different type of rabbi from the traditional rabbis. Now, why is that important? Rabbis with Shmikar that were proven to have Shmikar would have the authority. What authority? The authority to, re to represent a fresh perspective of Torah. And so Jesus comes into Israel as a rabbi with Smeaker. For instance, let me give a, 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 what, what I mean by this. You remember uh, when Jesus says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, you know, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, from a Gentile perspective, what do we see? We see a yoke around an oxen. But in rabbinical tradition, that's not what Yeshua is talking about. Because in rabbinical tradition, the yoke of a rabbi was his interpretation of Torah. Hmm. So Yeshua is saying, listen, come to me. I know Torah better than any rabbi before me. 
I can reinterpret Torah where Torah can bring you life, not death. That's why when uh, this book, Rabbi Jesus, you know, it writes, it brings the court of heaven from that rabbinical uh, perspective of, your, of Yeshua. It's completely life-changing. Well, you know, I'm reminded in the New Covenant where they talk about Yeshua going into the synagogue. They say he's different than the other rabbis. He's speaking with authority. Yes, th that's, that's what he meant. They said he speaks with authority. It was because he had smicha. He said he could interpret, he could reinterpret the... Uh, the Torah, because not any other rabbis could do that. All the other rabbis who need a shmiker, all they can do is follow the, the traditions of the other rabbis, what has been taught. But a rabbi with shmiker was allowed to reinterpret the law of Moses in his proper context. So here comes Yeshua and completely changes how the Jewish people saw the law of Moses so that the spirit behind the law is properly revealed. And so this book, following the footsteps of Rabbi Jesus, into the courts of heaven, presents the court of heaven from the perspective of Yeshua himself. Uh, you say that uh, without a ruling, Satan has a legal right to deny or delay our destiny. Yes. Explain. Oh, this is important, that even though Yeshua has died for us on the cross, and we are born again, we know we are going to heaven, it doesn't give us a license to sin or to break the law of God. If we do, even though we are born again, Satan has the legal rights, therefore, to use the evidence of our sinful behavior before the court of heaven to do what? Not to stop our salvation, but to delay or actually deny the destiny. Now, you had an incident with witchcraft that almost cost you your life. Tell me about that. Wow. See, this is uh, one of the most unusual demonic attacks that I've ever had in my life, but out of it came one of the most powerful pivotal revelations that's bringing breakthrough to thousands of people around the world. Uh, Sid, in uh, 2015, I went to Zambia for the homegoing celebrations of my mother, Esther, who had just transitioned into heaven. When I was there, when we, after we did the uh, homegoing, I got a phone call from an American a missionary He's got a massive church in Zimbabwe he, to wish me condolences, and then he invited me the very following week to fly to Zimbabwe so I could speak to 5,000 delegates at this conference. I accepted, but the day came when I had to fly over there. And so when I was pick, picked up by an apostle friend of mine, we're driving to the airport. It's only 45 minutes a drive to get to the airport. Halfway there, Sid, I knew I was in trouble like I've never been before. And I've had demonic attacks when you're on the front line of the battlefield. You know, in the ministry, you get attacks from the enemy. That's just part of the job. But this was another level. It started in a very strange way. It felt like somebody had taken a shovel and they were digging dirt. And, they were, and it, it started with my feet. Then it kept going up. I'm like, what is this? Now I'm not telling my friend because I'm thinking, what is this strange feeling? So I begin to pray in tongues what he's talking but it keeps going up, it goes up, and the, and the higher it goes up my body, the weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker I felt. It finally got to my loins. See, by the time I get to the airport, I'm like a 90 year, a, actually a, an unhealthy 90 year old man. I could hardly walk. I told my friend, I'm under a severe attack, I've never felt like this, so part of my mind thinks I need to get out of here. Maybe these are territorial spirits trying to kill me, let me get out of here. You know, so I, I couldn't wait to get on the plane. But before I could get to the plane, the Holy Spirit said to me, if you get on the plane, you die. He mm -hmm. said to me, there is, there is a demonic attack that has come against you. If you get on the plane, you die. You need to allow me to break it, help you break it before you leave. That's when I knew I was in trouble. I've never been in a hospital in my life. But they rushed me into a hospital called St. John's Medical Center in Lusaka, Zambia, Seed, where I was admitted and the doctor said, this man is in trouble. She put, they put tubes around me, uh, all kind of medication. And because I was so weak, I could hardly walk three steps without breathing heavily. They put my, uh, one of my young brothers in the room to kind of keep me company if I had to go to the restroom. Well, said at 2 a.m. in the morning, in the hospital, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he said, Francis, get up. Go outside into the hospital yard. At 2 in the morning, Holy Spirit, this is, a, this is a hospital break. <laughs> I get to the flower bed, and the Holy Spirit said to me, Francis, it's time for me to deliver you now. He said to me, pick up the dirt. And I picked up the dirt in my hands. 
I said, God, I've got the dirt. He said to me, the witches that are trying to kill you spoke to the dirt and they commanded the earth to swallow your body in premature death. Huh. This is why you are failing the soil going up. If it gets to your head, you are dead. He said, speak to the earth and give it a different instruction. Tell the earth who you are in the kingdom, that I need you, I have need of you, and reverse the curse, and you live. And seed under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, for the first time in my life, even though my mind was feeling weird, but my spirit was excited, but my mind, my theological mind is like, where, I mean, I'm looking for the theology for this, right. but my spirit knows this is God, but my, my theological mind is having conniptions. But I will obey God anyway. I took the dirt and a spirit of prophecy comes upon me. And I say this, and these words come out of my spirit. Earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Said I did not know that was exact scripture from the book of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 22, 29. Earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. And I began to prophesy to the earth about who I was. It was not my time to die. I reversed the curse of the witches. He gotta let me go. And the Lord said to me, Francis, she has heard. What? She has heard? He has said, put back and watch what happens. I, put, I took the dirt and I put it back in the soil seed. And I'm telling you, I'll never forget what happened next as long as I live. The dirt I'd been feeling all the way up to my waist now fell to the ground with a thud. Pow! And out of my toes, the power of God began to percolate from my, from my toes. By the time it got to my forehead, said I could run a mile. <laughs> I went back in the hospital. I was like Elijah. You would have died if you didn't have that revelation. I would have died that day. So I get in the hospital, uh, uh, bed, my brother said, what happened? I said, I don't know, but, uh, but I'm delivered. And then I told him, go to sleep, because me and the Lord have some business to do. I, I love prophetic experiences, but the Word of God means more, means more to now, me What does the soil have to do from the Bible? That's <laughs> what I want to know. So the Lord began to talk to me. He said to me, Francis, the earth is alive. And if you and my body of Christ does not understand that and don't speak to the earth, you'll be victims of witches who understand the mystery of the earth on the planet until you know that you can speak to creation and creation can listen to your voice and begin to move in your favor. <laughs> You know, this revelation is mind-blowing. You're going to demonstrate it when we come back, but we never got to the question of what God showed you about Job, the revelation. Rocked your theology. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when we come back, I want you to demonstrate with the dirt for miracles, and I want to know the revelation God gave you from the book of Job. Be right back. Right back to It's Supernatural. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book, Following the Footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the Courts of Heaven. You will understand how to partner with Jesus to pray prayers that hit the mark. Plus, receive his brand new book, I Speak to the Earth, God's Divine Resource Center, exclusively offered here. You will also get his bonus audio CD, Commanding Prayers of Breakthrough, Interactive Prayers that Silence the Enemy. It's all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9912. Dr. Francis Miles, in Following the Footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the Courts of Heaven, will mentor you to learn how Rabbi Jesus opens a door for you of limitless breakthroughs as the law of Moses is seen in light of God's grace. Understand how Jesus, as the Smeka Rabbi, speaks with a special authority to be your personal advocate and lawyer in the Courts of Heaven. See how Satan is allowed legal access to the Courts of Heaven to accuse and prosecute believers day and night, according to Revelation 12.10. But you can silence his voice and get a verdict of innocent. Contend with power against the blocking spirits that are delaying and preventing your healings, miracles, and full destiny. Get armed with 22 powerful prayers that are written right from the rabbinical tradition of Jesus. With Dr. Francis Miles' book, I Speak to the Earth, you'll learn how to release powerful revelations of dominion over the earth, bring healing to the land where you live, and much more. And with his exclusive bonus audio CD, you'll be equipped to 
speak to every need in your life and have victory. Battle and win over anxiety, depression, healing, and get breakthroughs. Find confidence and boldness to move in anointing power and miracles. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book, Following the Footsteps of Rabbi Jesus into the Courts of Heaven. You will understand how to partner with Jesus to pray prayers that hit the mark. Plus, receive his brand new book, I Speak to the Earth, God's Divine Resource Center, exclusively offered here. You will also get his bonus audio CD, Commanding Prayers of Breakthrough, Interactive Prayers that Silence the Enemy. It's all yours for a donation of just $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9912 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9912. We now return to It's Supernatural. Francis is getting such what I believe are end time revelations. For instance, he really questioned in the book of Job how Satan could have the audacity to do what he did in heaven in the book of Job. But God answered you. Tell me about everything God said. I was blown away, Sid, uh, as a theologian at a theological quagmire when I came to the book of Job. I couldn't hardly believe it. Because in the book of Job, it says that Satan shows up in heaven, the third heaven, before the glory of the Shekinah. Yeah, I've read that and I wondered about With that too. angels, he shows up. And so I'm looking at that and I'm saying, Lord, there's something wrong here because, I'm the theolo- because Jesus tells us, I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. We know he was cast out of heaven. Some, that's, I'm saying, Lord, I, I don't get it. Why is Lucifer in heaven? Well, I mean, somebody must be fired at the borders of heaven or let this guy cross over. You know, why are you... <laughs> I mean, this is not America. Come on, sir. This is heaven. You know, is the border that poor? I said, Satan is before <laughs> the, the, the God of heaven. God, I was expecting God to say, Satan, what are you doing here? Instead, the Lord does not ask Satan what he's doing there in heaven. He asked him, where on earth have you been? which means God is seeming to acknowledge that Satan's presence was legal. I just didn't get it. So one day God said to me, friends, I know this is the theological quagmire for you, but it's really simple. Yes, Satan was cast out of heaven. He has no residency here anymore. But he has been given a temporary access to one aspect of the kingdom of God, the courts of heaven, because how can we have a trial if the prosecutor is not seated? So Satan is a prosecutor, so he is the one who brings accusations. Jesus can't bring accusations against you. You only want an accuser and his own. So he has been given access to the court of heaven until the age of sin comes to an end. So he has legal right until that time when God puts him in a lake of fire to come before the court of heaven to bring charges against the children of men on earth who are breaking Torah, breaking the word of God. I'll tell you what, (laughs) I have been looking at that dirt. That's what that is here. It's dirt. The dirt. I have been looking at your dirt. Hallelujah. Tell me why that's there. Well, we are about to do a prophetic act because there's about to be a lot of miracles around the world. I really believe you are watching us for a reason because today becomes that moment of power where everything changes. It's the most expensive revelation God has ever given me. I almost died getting it. But the miracles that have come out of it are more than worth it. Why do we have the dirt here? Because we're going to do a prophetic act. Because do you know that the earth is alive and can actually swallow the witchcraft against you? Do you know that the earth is so alive, the earth can swallow the unemployment in your life? Because every resource you ever need is in the earth. Because the earth was made by God, God's divine provision center. You want a car? You don't come from heaven, you come from the earth. You want a husband, you won't drop from heaven, you come from the earth. You want a house, everything is on the earth. And that's why the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness the hour. Now, I discovered a scripture seed that blew my mind. I didn't even know it was in the Bible. And one day the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to go to the book of Revelation chapter 12. And verse 15, so Christine, uh, there's an interesting scripture I'm going to read it in a personalized version, but I'm just going to summarize what the Bible actually says. In a personalized way yes. you're doing it. I'm going to do it in a personalized way because it comes out even more powerful. The serpent, the dragon, Satan, spews the flood 
out of his mouth in order to drown the woman who I believe is Israel and the church. But then just right after that, the Bible says that the earth rose up to help the woman by swallowing the flood of the dragon. Read that script. So now I want to read it in a personalized way. You know, so I put it this way in a personalized way. This is my way of putting it because I want to deal with that in your life. And the witches or demon controlled people howled curses like a river out of their mouth after me so that I might be swept away. But the earth helped me and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the curses which they had howled out of their mouths. <laughs> that is strong. My God. Would you pray right now? I'm going to pray right now, whatever you are. You, I want you, you can do this in your, at your own time, but if you want to pause the, if you've got a divan, you can pause this thing. I want you to take some dirt in your hands, but I'm going to do it for you as a prophetic act. Get ready to see miracles in your life right now because we're going to command the earth to swallow the witchcraft, the unemployment, the debt in your life, and we're going to command the earth to bring forth prosperity, increase favor in your life because guess what? The earth is alive. And miracles. And miracles are going to come forth in your life. Or oh, your dead, your earth body is going to vomit diseases it just swallowed. Come on. <laughs> right now. Right I, now. In Jesus' mighty name. So let's pray wherever you are. Get ready for a miracle in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this miracle moment in Jesus' name. Earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. As a man of God today, I command you, for everybody who's watching this show, I command you, earth, 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 to rise up, open your mouth, for God gave you a mouth. And I command you to swallow every form of witchcraft that is working against the destiny of God's people around the world in Jesus' name. Earth, earth, I command you to swallow the unemployment for the Bible says the earth is full of God's fullness, not unemployment, God's fullness in Jesus' name. I command the earth to swallow the debt around God's people. And I command the earth right now to vomit or bring forth blessings of favor, increase, real estate, breakthrough, jobs in Jesus' name in the lives of God's people. And I also command your earth body because you see your body comes from dirt. It hears the voice of God the same way the earth hears the voice of God. So I command your earth body to vomit that cancer. We had a man vomit cancer. We commanded a man to vomit cancer and he vomited all cancer. Black stuff came out of after the command and the spinal, the cancer was in his spine. See, it, it was in his nerve and it came out stage four. Right now, I command your earth body, as your earth, earth bodies, I command you as a man of God, vomit that cancer, vomit that diabetes, vomit that disease in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. I'm telling you, see, I sense miracles are happening all over the world right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah.